Hello folks, I'm here today with the Lexus RX 450H Plus. This is the plug-in hybrid Lexus RX, all new. In fact, 95% of it's new. They've said this new model only carries over 5% of the old one. So it really is kind of a ground up redesign of this most classic of Lexus cars. So this one's got a two and a half litre naturally aspirated petrol engine with an eCVT transmission. Uh, that's mated to an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery pack. And in total, that gives you 304 brake horsepower and a 0 to 62 time of 6.5 seconds. So this is the Takumi model and uh, the paint here is called Sonic Copper. It's a 250 pound optional extra. I might not take that box if I'm honest, but there you go. Um, it's certainly quite striking. Uh, this one is £81,000, okay? But the RX itself starts from 62000 You have to remember this one's the plug-in hybrid and it's right up there in terms of its trim level. You'll probably be as surprised as I was to learn, as I did in the press pack for this vehicle, that the boot space is 461 litres because it's epic. It looks absolutely massive. Just eyeballing this, that you know, commonly used very mathematical unit of measurement, my eyeballs are telling me this is a 600 litre boot, but 461 is the official number. Um, not only have you got all this space here and it's a nice flat load floor, you've also got a fair bit of room under there, certainly for cable storage and for one, one or two other little bits and bobs. Uh, you've got electrically controlled switches to put the rear seats down, also got a 12 volt socket in there. Folks, this is huge. You could get a ton of luggage in it. Don't listen to the numbers, listen to your eyes. Starting off in the back of this car, and I don't think I've ever been happier in the rear of a car, apart from that one time. I mean, just look at it. The, the material quality throughout is absolutely exceptional. You've got some blinds there. Uh, you've got these brilliant suede inserts and every material you touch is absolutely top quality. Um, you've got two USB-Cs down here, you've got heated and cooled rear seats, you've even got a 12 volt plug socket down there. In here we've got a very tricky little cup holder and some storage. And as there's quite a low transmission tunnel, this middle seat's actually quite usable and the passenger sitting in there will be reasonably comfortable. Uh, headroom's not quite as generous as the legroom, but we do have this huge panoramic roof in here, which makes the back of the cabin really light and airy. You have to think, I've probably sat in the back of a hundred cars during the last year, and this is the one I'd most like to spend a long journey in. One other thing, folks, if the person in the passenger seat there is getting a bit annoying, reclining a bit too much, you can push their seat forward with these handy little controls on the side there. And uh, also in here somewhere, oh hello, electronically reclining rear seats. It's the gift that keeps on giving. I might just end the review here because I just want to spend more time in the back of this car. It's lovely. So does that level of fit and finish transfer through to the front? Well, yes, it does. You've got the same soft, squishy materials everywhere. This one's got this very nice sort of classic yet somehow modern uh, wood trim. I really like it, actually. I think it suits the car really well. Um, you've got things like these suede or Alcantara inserts in the door cards and on the seats. Um, Mark Levinson sound system in this one, which I think is 21 speakers off the top of my head. Sounds amazing. Very, very good indeed. Um, this brilliant Toyota cubby that you can open from either side, which we've come to know and love. Under here, this nicely damped little panel, um, we've got a USB-C and a USB-A. Now, if you want to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you need to use that USB-A socket, but you've also got wireless Apple CarPlay, which for me, I just use that all the time, it's that simple. Um, you've also got two further USB-Cs up here. So just in the front of this cabin, we've got four USB sockets. Watch and learn, other car manufacturers. So the cup holder in this is very unique and quite trick. Um, you, sometimes the cup holder fits a can very well, but a bottle gets lost in it and vice versa. This one's got an adjustable floor, so you can push it down and fit in a tall bottle and it will hold it really nicely. If you've got, say, a short coffee cup or maybe a can, um, press this little button and the floor raises up. 
it's genius such a simple idea but it's really genius and you actually use it quite a bit in practice and really nicely damped glove box and that's all felt lined everything in here feels like exceptional quality it really does feel good uh, now the star in here really is this 14 inch infotainment system and despite the fact that it's got this really annoying terms of use that you have to accept everything on every time you get in the car that gets old very quickly i have to tell you aside from that it's brilliant anything you ever knew about toyota and lexus infotainment systems and how generally disappointing they were uh, really forget it because this new system is brilliant and the way it integrates with apple carplay is phenomenal honestly it does one of the best jobs of integrating uh, in with the car's existing software that I've probably seen. It's brilliant. Uh, heated steering wheel, heated and climate controlled seat. Steering wheel itself is very familiar. If you're used to Lexus cars, it does have a little wood insert on this one, but nice comfortable thing, nice and chunky without being huge. And this Takumi model, we've also got a color head up display and a color driver information display down here. Now that driver information display is perfectly good, really usable, it's got everything you need but just the fonts and the layout, it looks a bit old hat in a car that otherwise feels very, very modern. I'm not gonna demonstrate it now, by the way, but the voice control system in this car is as good as anything I've seen in any car as well. It's just really natural. You don't have to use very specific commands. It seems quite intuitive and, um, you know, 99 times out of 100, it does what you've asked it to do without any drama. It's really good. Now there are cars out there with more luxurious or flashier cabins, but this does that thing that Lexus does so well. It's supreme quality, but somehow just flies below the radar. It's subtle. It's not kind of forcing itself down your throat. It's lovely. It really is a great quality cabin. And I think anyone would be hard pushed to get in here and find fault with it really. Now, once you get behind the wheel of the Lexus RX, it's still nice and refined. It will usually start in EV mode. So it starts up silently. And then when you're actually on the road with it, you get very little noise coming in from outside. Other traffic you barely hear, uh, very little tire rumble, very little of anything. Uh, one thing you do get is when you rev the engine quite hard and you put your foot to the floor, obviously this is an eCVT, which in practice feels quite like a normal CVT. And that means it's gonna hold the revs really high and it's only a two and a half litre naturally aspirated petrol engine. You know, it hasn't got a turbo or anything, so you do hear the engine working. But despite that, it's a lovely thing to cruise in. You can do a long journey in this and get out completely refreshed. And it's a surprising amount of fun in the twisty stuff. Take it onto the back roads and throw it around a bit, and it loves it. Uh, even though it's a big, heavy car, it's just over 2.2 tonnes, um, it's really well sprung. The, the suspension's ultra comfortable, but doesn't feel boaty. And as I said, you can fling it around a bit and it likes it. Um, obviously that would be better with a proper automatic gearbox, um, but you know, it's not perfect. Nothing is. Now this being the plug-in hybrid, you've got several options of how you drive it really. You can, of course, just drive it as a petrol car. Uh, you can fill the thing with petrol, never plug it into anything. It will actually run as a self-charging hybrid if you decide to do that because it's that clever. However, I'd imagine most people were actually buying a Lexus RX rather than simply getting one as a bit of a company car tax dodge are going to keep the battery charged up. That allows you to drive the car as a full EV. I'll put the um, range on the screen for you because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Or you can use it as a hybrid and the car will simply kick in the petrol engine when need be, use the electric power when need be, ensuring the most economical way possible for you to get down the road. Uh, the other option is if you're in the car and say you've run out of electric power, you don't have time to charge, or you don't have anywhere to charge, uh, you can actually put it into self-charging mode. That essentially uses the engine as a petrol generator. And I'll just pop it into that now. I don't know if you can hear, but it gets a bit gruff and obviously you're using quite a lot more petrol, but I guess that would come in really handy if you're entering say a zero emission zone and um, you want to avoid any fees attached to that. 
you could charge the car as you drive along on the way to that zero emission zone and then simply pop it into EV mode once you arrive. Now this being a plug-in hybrid, it comes with one of those outlandish MPG figures that you always get with a plug-in hybrid. And of course that's not achieved with normal real world driving of a plug-in hybrid, that's achieved with it running basically as an EV for most of the time. So the official MPG figure on this car is over 200 MPG. And uh, I'm not going to shock anyone when I tell you that's not really achievable. Now, obviously, in the real world, folks, if you run the car as Toyota intended and you keep the battery charged up and you've got petrol in the tank and everything else, I reckon you're going to get about 50 mpg. Now, this is completely anecdotal based on my time with the car. Now, there will be some people watching this that do a short journey every day and run it as a full EV every day obviously that would be very different. There will also be those that don't ever top the battery up and um, just use the petrol tank, maybe company car drivers that just want that cheaper company car tax, and they'll tell you a very different story. And this is the struggle when reviewing plug-in hybrids sometimes, is everyone's use case is gonna be so completely different um, that it's difficult to give you any kind of hard and fast number that makes any kind of sense um, certainly to you and your potential use case. Now I mentioned earlier about that slight annoyance with the infotainment screen, you have to accept terms and conditions every time you get in the car. There is another annoyance, but it's an annoyance that will become the future for all of us, unfortunately, and it's the driver assist, things like speed limit warnings. Um, the car is constantly beeping at you unless you turn that off, and you do have to turn it off every time you get in the car. Now, as I said, this is a little glimpse into the future because before too long, every new car will do that and every new car, you'll need to turn things off every time you get in. And I believe at some point, you won't even be able to turn them off. So get used to the beeps, folks. Now, folks, there's no two ways about it. 81 grand on this particular car is a hell of a lot of money to spend on a vehicle, especially when you consider at some of the competitors in the same market, you know, BMW and Jag and Audi, you know, they're all vying for your dollar with similar kind of vehicles at really quite similar price points, and some of them actually quite a bit less than this. However, if you're buying a car for the long term, no one does reliability quite like Toyota and Lexus, and no one does longevity like it. I think you could get in this car when it's got 150,000 miles on it, and everything will still work and everything will still feel good. Everything will still feel new after it's had a valet. I don't think you can say that about quite a few of its German rivals. And really, I think if you do pick one of these up with 150,000 miles on it, I don't think it will have had a ton of big repair bills in its lifetime. It's gonna be reliable, it's gonna be dependable, it's gonna do the job. You know, my wife has aged like a bottle of wine and I've aged like a bottle of milk. This Lexus is that bottle of wine, folks. It's gonna get better with age. So what do you think of this one, folks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you're interested in leasing a Lexus RX, click on the link to Lease Loco in the video description. That will take you straight to all the latest offers on the RX that are available to you at the time you click that link. Also, if you're looking to buy or sell a used car, go to vehiclescore.co.uk. It's a great way of finding lots of information on a car before you buy or sell. And it's free to use, folks. So go and check it out now. Thanks ever so much for watching this one. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you next time.